Hey everyone, John Henry here, SlingshotFutures.com. In this one, we're going to be taking a look at trade confirmations. Now, I've had a couple requests in terms of looking at trade confirmations and sort of what I mean by them. Uh, so when we're talking about trade confirmations, there's a lot of different ways that you can really confirm a trade. Sometimes it's as simple as just waiting for a secondary test of something. Uh, as an example, on the 2000 tick chart that I have here, if I were looking to be a buyer, it's nice to be a buyer above the bull bar, but it's a lot nicer to see the sellers come down, fail, and then buy above their failure, right? That would be considered a confirmation. Uh, so there's ways that you can utilize price action in that sense of waiting for the market to retest a zone of interest, uh, double testing an area of interest. You could think of it as kind of like a double top or double bottom. Um, but there are also a lot of different ways to confirm it just by seeing excessive amounts of failures from one side. Uh, from a psychological perspective, you're going to have people who are trying to come in, like right here actually on the screen, we have this really strong move up. After a pretty persistent drive down, sellers are going to be trying to come into that kind of move and they keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and keep trying and they're just not getting the job done. Well, eventually they're going to start giving up. We're going to start hitting their stops above the highs. They're going to start losing patience, etc. And that's where you get that kind of continuation in the opposite direction. And that confirmation came in a lot of different ways. You could be looking at the sellers saying, okay, well, if I were a short here, uh, the sellers had a pretty good move down. They had a nice little scalp. It reversed back up, okay, but then the next time, it was a little bit more trappy, and then the time after that, it was even worse. That whipped down and then went full bull engulfing back up, and then by the time it finally came back down, notice where it landed, kind of right back inside that consolidation again. Chances are, earlier sellers who may have been stuck probably utilize that as an opportunity to get out uh, at a break even. So again, we're, we're kind of backing all of that information up as confirmation. It's allowing us to really confirm or not confirm a trade. Uh, and there are other ways to go even further into it by utilizing things like volume. Uh, now, if you have NinjaTrader 8, the newer versions of NinjaTrader 8 at least, if you go into the drawing tools, uh, a little bit further down, you've got the order flow volume profile. I have a shortcut command, control alt shift P. Um, if you don't have a shortcut command, you can set that in your control centers. Uh, but what you can do is you can actually highlight specific areas to see where those clusters of volume, you know, where they're showing up. So if we see a big drive of volume to the upside off of the low, we can measure from the beginning of that drive to the top of that drive. And we can see where was the interest in this move. And as we can see, looking back at it, not really surprising, I guess, most of the volume interest came when we started coming back into previous structural resistance. We're in a downtrend, uh, and we're starting to come back to a previous swing high. You kind of expect to see that happen, right? But this is a further confirmation that now, not only are we expecting to see it there, but we're actually seeing it there, right? That's even more confirmation when we're utilizing some form of volume uh, to, to kind of confirm the hypothesis. And then we can take that even further and look and see, okay, well, if we were talking about the sellers maybe getting stuck, trying to get out of break even, we can go further and see what happened in terms of volume, right? The market's grinding its way higher, and we're seeing this POC, the, the majority of the volume, staying in the middle, we start breaking above the highs, we go a little bit further forward, and now we can see the POC shifting up a little bit further, and then we jump this forward a little bit more to where that potential break even is, and we can see there's a big chunk of volume that comes in right around those lows that all kind of stacks up in that same area. It appears as though uh, those sellers probably got out of break even, and they utilize that drive down to gather that, because like we see here, that volume a couple candles ago, wasn't there, right? So nobody was exiting on that move until we poked down that one last time, that last little bump down, and then, hey, presto, there's all that volume right back into those major areas of interest, and it's likely that it was those sellers getting out and kind of clearing the way for the move up. Uh, now, it, as far as other types of confirmations, there are a lot of other ones like using divergences. Divergences are a big one. Uh, there's a full video that I have on divergences already, so I'm not going to go over that. Uh, but there are indicator confirmations. I mean, there's any number of different things. When it comes to confirmations, for me personally, I would say my favorite ones are probably price action confirmations, uh, where you're seeing a market double test an area or really kind of confirm that a zone is, is good or bad. 
Uh, and then also along with that, more of a volume centric type of confirmation uh, where we can literally see what our hypothesis is when it's actually coming through or not coming through. Uh, and then along with that, a structured basis, which we haven't really talked about. And that's going to come in usually a faster time frame zoomed a little further out. This is how I prefer to trade structure, and when I'm talking about structure, just without going too crazy on details, uh, what I'm talking about is a more zoomed out structural view of the markets, not so much candle by candle, but the market as a whole, as if you were to draw ranges and wedges and all of that kind of stuff on there. Uh, and what we can do with that is we can locate zones of interest that are giving us a, a way to confirm an area before the market even gets there. So what I mean is, like right here, this is a very big zone of interest. It's obvious, right? I don't, you don't need to be a, a rocket dentist to figure that out. We've got a lot of support coming in here, a lot of support coming in here. We have a breakdown, good resistance. We come back, good resistance and support more support and resistance, you kind of get the idea here. It's obvious that if the market comes back down towards that 3065 zone, we're probably going to get some support there, right? Uh, so we already have confirmation ahead of the fact, and that's being driven off of structure. Now, what's really cool is when you dig in even further and say, all right, I have a structural area that has confirmation, and then you zoom into an even faster time frame or a different time frame like our tick charts, and you find volume confirmation, and then you find price action confirmation, and you start stacking all of those things on top of one another, then you've got yourself a really, really good one, two, three, however many confirmations punch. Uh, but that's what I'm talking about when we're going over confirmations is really just waiting for the market to give me a little bit of proof. Now, you do have to understand when you're waiting for a little bit of extra proof, if you're waiting for more confirmation, you are also taking the risk of potentially missing the trade. You might not get that extra confirmation and the market just leaves you in the dust. That happens too. You've got to be okay with that side of the risk as well. For me, if a trade's not setting up the way that I wanted it to, I'm just not going to take it. And if it leaves me in the dust, that's fine because it didn't set up the way that I wanted it to. You're following your rules. All right, so that's going to do it for this one. That is all about trade confirmations, what I prefer uh, for trade confirmations, whether it's price action or structure or volume or whether you like stochastic divergence or whatever your favorite thing is. Confirmation is really just looking for that extra little push to get that trade on the table rather than off. That's going to do it for this one. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email, jbrink at slingshotfutures.com. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.